All right, let's jump right into it. <laughs> um, <laughs> whenever I'm asked from someone outside of science, what are you working with? I s usually say something like, yeah, I'm doing s uh, trying to bridge forestry and co biological, what's going on here, and uh, conservation. And um, I in detail, I'm working with clear cuts and how can you conserve biodiversity there. And then usually people look at me a bit like clear cuts and conservation, how does that fit? Because usually what they have in mind is something like that. And yeah, it's pretty clear cut from that picture that you can't conserve much uh, if it looks like that. So what do we have to do? We actually have to leave some trees on the area to retain some trees, either scattered across the area, which would be um, dispersed retention or in the form of retention groups, which are the objects that I study. And um, especially uh, I'm interested in tree mortality, or we are interested in tree mortality and how it, <laughs> 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 how it changes over time, actually. <laughs> yeah, how does it change over time? What's influencing the tree mortality of these retention trees? And how does it differ among different species of trees? And maybe the overarching aim would be to how, how would you have to construct the ideal retention tree group that is long living and provides continuous input of dead wood? All right. <laughs> so <laughs> what we did is we um, went to middle Sweden, looked at a lot of retention trees in a lot of clear cuts that were in comparison relatively small, about 23 trees per retention tree group. And we mainly looked at pine, spruce, and birch trees, although there were a few other broadleaf species um, in the study plots present. <laughs> um, I did a <laughs> model um, <laughs> which was a, a mixed linear uh, hierarchical model. If anyone's interested in that, please talk to me later about it. And basically, with the help of this <laughs> model, <laughs> I'm not doing anything here. Um, um, yeah, we we wanted to see which factors are influencing the mortality. Um, and there were consistent or uniform responses across species, but there were also uh, responses or factors that were only valid for certain species, with the most common cause of death being the uprooting of trees by wind. Um, so volume, for example, was a very uh, important factor influencing uh, mortality, which is logical in a way because if you think about an area, you could think a ah, big retention group area is good, but then a big area can only comprise a, a small number of trees and you don't have the same effect, whereas a small area can have lots of trees in it and be relatively um, well sheltered and prone to mortality. Um, if you have lots of trees on a small area, however, you'd be thinking about density as well, which can act in different directions. Um, it can either um, be a facilitation by uh, having just the right amount of shelter sheltering trees uh, in the group, but it can also lead to increased mortality by competition in the retention tree group. So that's why volume is uh, relatively powerful factor or variable influencing mortality. Um, then uh, we found the trees that were situated at the former stand edge that have been continuously uh, exposed to open conditions have a much higher chance of survival and a much reduced mortality than trees that were uh, retained in the middle of a stand like here. So here, for example, this edge against a small like linear mire um, <laughs> would have reduced mortality. Then the presence of seed trees also reduced mortality, either by the shelter that these trees that are left on the area to ensure the natural rejuvenation um, give pro or provide with their crowns, or because a couple of years before the seed trees uh, are left and before harvesting, 
is uh, done, there is a, a thinning to prepare these trees for the more open conditions, and that might also benefit the um, survival of these trees and reduce mortality. Then um, we found that wet soil was increasing mortality probably because of the limited anchorage of trees in the peat that doesn't provide that mon much of uh, substrate and resistance to root on. Um, and then an important factor was exposure um, that increased mortality. And exposure can be that trees are situated on uh, topography like a hill that is exposed and prone to higher wind speeds, for example. Or exposure could also be the distance to the next stand, especially in the direction of the prevailing winds, so westerly winds in our case. And both uh, are increasing mortality. Um, then what most people would probably think about first is if you're a big tree, you have a big diameter at breast height, dBH, then you should be um, prone to higher wind pressure. There should be a higher leverage because you, you're higher above the ground than a small tree, and you should be more likely to die. But we found this only to be true for spruce trees, not for the other uh, species like pine and birch. Um, and the tree height, that was the only variable that was significantly increasing mortality, um, but that was only for birch. So that's a bit um, unexpected, and the slenderness is basically a ratio between the height of a tree and the thickness of a tree. So if you're a tall and slender tree, kind of like me, you're more likely to die if you are a spruce. <laughs> so um, this is just showing you that there are some uniform responses um, and some responses that seem to be highly species specific and that's what is confirmed by other studies on the topic. Now if we look about um, the cumulative mortality over time and the different ages of the clear cuts, you should think the older clear cut is, the more trees will die and mortality will increase. But in fact, we just found a significant increase in the first four years and then it leveled off, which was kind of unexpected for us as well. Then we found that mortality species are dependent with the highest mortality in spruce trees, kind of high mortalities in willow and mountain ash, and pine and birch were about the same average mortality, but a lot of the birch had zero mortality in the retention tree groups. That's why the median is that low. So it's very different between species. Um, and if we can recommend something, um, it would be retain more volumes in the retention tree groups on former forest edges, if that's possible. Then have seed trees on your clear cut. That's good if you want to uh, have long-living tree groups and avoid groups on very wet soil and exposed in exposed locations to reduce mortality. Thanks. <laughs>